Hello and welcome to this episode of In Discussion With from Pharmacy Update Online. Today I'm talking to Yogita Dauda and Anshu Rayan about sodium valproate and the problems of birth defects and developmental disorders. So ladies, please could you start by introducing yourselves? I'm Deputy Chief Pharmacist at Central and Northwest London NHS Foundation Trust. Okay, my name is Yagita. I'm the lead clinical lead for mental health at Central and Northwest London Foundation Trust. I'm also the educational portfolio lead for the College of Mental Health Pharmacy. Can you tell me a little bit about what your jobs involve? I started uh, working at CNWL, Central and Northwest London NHS Foundation Trust, 22 years ago as an addictions pharmacist. And I've worked my way through the trust with various roles, and I'm currently Deputy Chief Pharmacist at the organisation. And I manage medicines, optimisation and pharmacy services across the division, as well as pharmacy operations. I also support the Chief Pharmacist in managing all aspects of trust pharmacy services uh, to enable us to deliver clinically effective and safe services to our patients at CNWL. I also lecture and provide some training at the School of Pharmacy for UCL School of Pharmacy. So CNWL provides NHS services throughout a person's life. Uh, This includes physical and mental health services, as well as everything in between with GP practices, as well as in patients' homes. So I've also worked at Central and Northwest London for approximately 20 to 21 years, um, mainly in mental health. My role has mainly worked and been involved in working as a borough lead across all the different uh, boroughs within the organisation, but mainly within Harrow and Brent. More recently in the past year, I've moved into a role which actually uh, would lead to me being a consultant pharmacist pending um, some accreditation that I need to do with the the professional body. And this post is very varied. Um, No two days are the same. That's what I really, really love about my job. But the most important part is just that it involves a lot of direct patient facing work. I'm a non-medical prescriber, so I run my own clinic in the community mental health teams, particularly for patients who are on complex medication needs. And every week I also am part of a peer review panel with um, an MDT um, group that actually looks at patients who have frequent readmissions or long lengths of stays or just generally are difficult to treat. Um, And so that's done every week as well. Um, On top of that, I also um, am involved in developing the medicines optimization service, facilitating research and QI projects, and also leading on ENT um, related medicines, um, mental health medicines related issues. And the most important part, and I think the one that I love most, is actually co-chairing the co-production meetings for the organisation as well. A recent newspaper article highlighted the problems of sodium valproate and pregnancy. Could you just give us a bit of background information about sodium valproate to start? So there are various forms of valproate. It um, comes as sodium valproate, valproate, but also valproic acid, uh, valproate semi-sodium. It also has various different brand names as well. So um, you'll probably see it as many different forms. Epilim is probably the most common one. Um, Valproate is most commonly used to treat epilepsy or as a mood stabiliser. Right. So what is the problem then with sodium valproate and pregnancy? Ever since valproate was introduced in the 70s, um, it included a warning about the risk of possible birth defects. Over the years, that warning has been updated and as more evidence has emerged, um, those kind of warnings have become more tightened and more stringent. The most recent evidence suggests that children exposed to valproate during pregnancy, there's a one in 10 will develop um, risks of birth defects and up to four out of 10 are at risk of developmental disorders. So the risks are really, really high. Um, This led to new regulations, I think in approximately 2018 with MHRA banning the use of valproate in women and girls who are capable of becoming pregnant. And that's regardless of age or indication, and no matter how unlikely or how careful they plan to be, unless they are under what's called a pregnancy prevention program, also known as PREVENT, and all of the conditions of that PREVENT program need to be met as well. 